Hi guys, I'm here to show you all of the layouts that I made with the amazing Dear Lizzie chipboard large words. These are called paintable large chipboard words and they're by Dear Lizzie. And as you can see, the package is completely empty because I used every single one of these suckers. These are the words. Now I trimmed down the package a little bit so that it would fit in one of these six by 12 bags that I use for a variety of things. Anything that can fit in them, I typically will put in them because it's really handy. Uh, things slide in and out really easily. So I have been storing these words in there, but they very quickly disappeared this month. These words were included in the hip kit for October of 2017. And I was very surprised at how large they were. I had heard that they were large. And so I was sort of ready for it, but they were really, really large words. And so I had so much fun working with these. They were kind of like my biggest surprise of 2017. If I had to say, here's something I thought I'd kind of like, but I had no idea just how much I'd like it, it would be these Dear Lizzie giant chipboard words. I am in love. Now, having just scrapbooked six pages using big giant words, I certainly am ready to not use big words for a little while, but I could totally incorporate a product like this more, I could see using it more interspersed with my layouts. I mean, in this case, I was just so gung-ho about them that I just wanted to use up the whole package. So I have six layouts here that will give you guys six different ideas about how to use these ginormous white chipboard words, which I don't have any left to show you what they looked like before, but I will put a little clip of me showing them right up in the corner maybe of this video so that you can see just how awesome these chipboard words were. Okay, so I've ordered the pages in the order in which I did them. So this was the first of the letter of the words that I used. This is the word adventure. And for this one, I created this really fun page about Girl Guide Camp. One thing that I have found just for me and my own style of scrapbooking is that when I use words that are this large, one thing that I really like to do is keep the whole rest of the page rather simple in that, I mean, there's there's splatter and there's, you know, a bit of a scattering of embellishments around this page, but the majority of the page is kind of like structured and predictable. There's actually some dust on this page. That's how long it has been sitting around on my, on my table. This one I created for my Patreons, so I don't have a public process video for this one, so I will just show you up close. What I did with this word was I wanted to have an ombre effect from dark to light, and so what I did was I set it down on my, on my, um, on my work surface, and then I just took some mist that came in a previous hip kit I think I used I think I used Caribbean Sunset. It could have been a different red, uh, but I did use a reddish color and I just misted it and that gave me kind of like a little bit of a base coat and then I just kept on misting it and I held my hand back a ways so that most of the mist was falling in like this zone and then just the overspray was falling out here and then I just kept on doing it at the same place over and over again and eventually this part got filled in with really light mist and this part got deeper and deeper every time I kind of did that so I just kind of go like miss 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 and then wait for it to dry and then miss 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 and I was holding it at about this distance from the word itself. Obviously the word was not on my layout then, it was just on a work surface. And then I used the letters that came in the hip kit to spell out at Girl Guide Camp. And I really love how the title is the main emphasis of this page and because the photos are kind of like right above it and then the embellishments are just floating out in the background. I think it kind of really does help the title and the pictures take center stage and then these are just kind of um, accentuating them. So I used the stars, the puffy stars that came in the kit. I used enamel dots and I used these little hearts that came in the Project Life kit for that month, for the month of October. And then I did sew around the mat, and I really like using this floral gray patterned paper for my mat. I'm trying to use unexpected mats these days, and I think that the floral really complements nicely the bold 
um, diagonal stripe, although it's not that bold because it, the colors are not high contrast with one another. So this paper is a really nice way to use a bold diagonal print if you are a little hesitant to use something so bold on your backgrounds. It's uh, nice to use the, the, the stripe itself is bold but the contrast between the colors is not very bold so it's a nice way to use that kind of, a, of an item. So yes, I do have to kind of clean this page off before I put it in my book. So that's the first one. Adventure at Girl Guide Camp, and I'll read the journaling for you. It says, Fall camping at Sheldrake Lake Camp is one of the highlights of the season. Now that Liv is in treks, Sophie goes on her own to this two day, three day, two night camp. It's nice to see her come into her own. So there's that one. The next one I did, this one is available on my channel, so I'll link it in the information section. I'll, I'll link it in a card. Um, so again, I'm dusting it off because it's been on my page for a while, on my on my desk for a while. So for this one, I actually painted the chipboard title, so the magical. And for this, I used the watercolor paint that came in the kit. It's this lapis dance, which is a solid. It might not be solid now because I added what. Yeah, it is solid again. Uh, it's a solid watercolor medium that you add. You kind of activate by misting it with water and then it becomes a uh, really pigmented paint. So I really love that color and uh, I thought it really worked well with the with the vintage look of the photos because they have Instagram filters on them. And there is a process video for this one so I won't describe it in too much detail. There's also a process video for this one and so again I won't go into too much detail for this one but uh, I basically wanted lots of fall leaves on this one and th this one kind of took a while for me to kind of decide on a design so you might want to check out the process video just to see what my thought process was and how I went from one idea to a completely different idea. I really adore this striped background paper so I, I used it again for a background uh, just and you can see how the two layouts actually do have quite different looks to them even though they both have the same background paper. It's kind of interesting to try different things with your supplies and, and use them kind of in the same way but maybe with a bit of a twist just to see it's it's a nice way to develop your style to kind of see okay well if I do this almost exactly the same but with a little bit of a twist how does that make it different and that's a nice way to kind of explore design principles and what your style is and for this one I really was married to the idea of combining this pink and cream background paper with all of these really rich uh, fall items because to me this pink and cream background doesn't really go with the fall stuff and so I wanted to to see how I could play with that kind of adding an unexpected element and it's not a small one right like it's a big the main part of the page like the main background is this very unexpected color and so I wanted to see if I could make it work and I really love how it turns out it is very unexpected and the look might not be for everyone but I do really like it and that's the only way that you learn what you like in scrapbooking is to kind of try something different every once in a while sometimes you have to break some rules and uh, that's the, it's kind of like a nice way to learn the principles too so even if I hadn't liked how it turned out I still would have kept this page and thought okay well um, now I know right uh, but it turns out I did like it so that was kind of nice there is a process video for this one and the main thing that I did with this title here is I painted it I painted it with the gold paint that came in the color kit from the hip kit club for this month so well it was October so it was last month actually and this is called Old Yeller and it's Inklings by uh, Glimmer by uh, Shimmer Paints and so I painted the title with that and look at how lovely that looks I don't know if you can pick up on just how metallic and beautiful that that gold part of the title is but basically I used a piece of washi tape not this washi tape but another piece of washi tape to mask that off and then I painted the blue and I was going to just leave it at that and then I just decided that it needed something else just to kind of dress it up a little bit so I added 
this washi tape and I just laid it across and then I cut it and wrapped it around all the different parts of the letter. And you can check that out in the process video if you're interested in seeing how I did that. But I really love how it turned out. It really kind of dressed up the title quite a bit and I'm really, really pleased with it. I'll definitely try that look again when I'm painting text or titles or anything really. This one has a process video on my channel and it's a super, super simple layout. Really the title was the main part of the design of this one. So uh, I had these hilarious pictures of my daughter checking out these really weird wall hangings at the orthodontist and then her reaction to them was so funny. Uh, and I was just kind of, I didn't know that I'd be capturing that reaction. I was just kind of getting ready to take her picture uh, in the orthodontist chair just in case he decided that she did need braces. I thought it might be interesting to have kind of like that first day when you found out you needed braces kind of picture. And so I was just kind of getting ready with the framing and figuring out um, how zoomed in I was going to be and I was just snapping a whole bunch and then my intention was to say okay now smile and I'll take the real picture. But in the process of that I got this really funny reaction <laughs> from her. So um, I wanted this, I started off just wanting this title to be a little bit more finished, like they come in white, and so I thought about just leaving it white, but it just didn't look finished enough for me, and then I tried inking it. I tried a couple of different things, and you'll see that in the process video for this page, um, but I ended up coming up with the idea of trying to make it look like tooth enamel, and so I used Nouveau Drops to make the word today look like tooth enamel. I just put it on really, really, really thick, and then I let it dry. And then I had this wire in my sewing stash. I'm not a huge sewer, but for some reason I had wire in my sewing stash. I mean, obviously you're not going to put that through your sewing machine, but it was in there with that stuff for some reason. So I decided to wrap that around my title and make it kind of look like my title had braces. So that's cool. It says not today, but soon. I didn't do any journaling because it's kind of self-explanatory. It's one of those things that I... I like to tell uh, visual stories as often as possible. I have a very verbal job, and so I find myself talking and listening and writing and reading a lot. So if I can tell a story with just some words and design elements, I would rather do that than have big long journaling that says, you know, we weren't sure if she was going to need braces and we brought her to the orthodontist and he said, you could get braces now or you could wait. It's not really, um, it, it, it you know, it's not really essential that you get them right now. And you, you know, like, what's the point of writing all of that? You can tell that by this, right? And the title, the title tells that, you know, not today, but soon. You can imply what's happening there because there's braces on those weird guys on the wall and whatnot. And she's obviously sitting in a dentist chair. So um, that's a really, really simple layout that I did. I did put sewing around the edges of it because it was such a simple layout. I just wanted to do as much as I could to make it look finished off and not like I forgot to, fin to you know, finish it off. So that is, there is a process video for this one, so I'll link that one as well. And now we have this one, which is Memories. 19. So the title of this one is actually 1990 Fashion Statement, and Memories is more of an embellishment than the title. And so that's another way that you can use these giant words. You don't always have to make a title out of them. So the, la the previous three, they were all part of the title, but I thought for this one, I'd use it a little bit differently. So, this one, I have a process video. I haven't actually, I filmed it, but I haven't narrated it and edited it yet. So it will be coming up soon. And for this one, I had the great pleasure of working with Freckled Fawn Supplies. And I'm so pumped that they are making um, paper and cards now, like journaling cards and paper, 12 by 12 paper at that. I'm just like so impressed and happy about that. So I used some of the paper that they had available for, I think it was their November kits. 
I think it came out with the November Freckled Fawn kits. Anyhow, uh, it's gorgeous paper and it really has a different look to it. It's really bold and colorful, and but it still has these soft colors too, so I really, really adored it. This is something that I'm making for a very special album that I'm doing. Um, I'm making a class for my Patreon members and uh, it's a class called uh, Scrapbooking the High School Years. And so um, I thought I would make this, although this page is not part of the class, it's just kind of like a bonus video that I have. Uh, this was a page that I hadn't actually intended to make until the last minute, and so it wasn't really planned into any of the lesson plans, so I thought I would just do this, and it's a public video, so you can have a look at it, even if you're not a Patreon, so it will be posted sometime in the next couple of days. Actually, I might post it in time for Thursday, for my Thursday content, because I try to provide new content for you guys every Monday and every Thursday. This video I'm hoping to get up today, and then this one will probably come out on Thursday. So I did use this banner from my stash and it's actually not attached. When I go to put it in my page, if it's flopping around too much, I'll, I'll put it down, I'll, I'll attach it in some way. But for now, I'm just letting it hang there. It kind of hangs nicely. And you can check out the process video for this one if you're interested in seeing how it came together. But for this one, I painted the word memories with some mist. So I used either this, this uh, Caribbean sunset or I actually probably used this one maybe Mango Tango or Ruby. Yeah, actually, I think I used Ruby Spritz on this one. It was a Shimmers product, anyways. I did tie a little charm onto the end of the S in Memories, just to kind of fancy it up a little bit and add a little bit of interesting detail. What I did was I misted it and, and kind of saturated it. So instead of misting it into an ombre effect, I just soaked the whole thing in mist and allowed it to dry. And then I went over it with glossy accents to give it this real shiny look. So this is the last page that I made with the paintable chipboard words, and this one is called Love Him. And I really wanted to do something different with this one. I knew this was my last page with the, with these items because it was my last word. I had no more left after this. And I just wanted to do something a little bit different. And so what I thought I wanted to do was somehow make the word be part of the background. Like I wanted it to look like it was integrated with the background paper. So what I decided to do was actually cover the whole page in tissue paper and use matte medium to because matte medium is a mixed media supply that you use in collaging that helps um, bring all of your layers together into one into one unified background and so when I covered the word love and the background paper, which is just a piece of cardstock that came in the October hip kit, uh, it kind of integrated the word and makes the word look like it's embossed on the page. When really it's just sandwiched between the background page and the and the tissue paper that was above it. And so this is a page that I made for my Patreon, so um, there's no process video on my channel for this one. Uh, but it was really, really fun to make, and basically I just used a collaging technique where you just paint down, um, put your matte medium, which is basically like a glue that dries. Um, I find you could use Mod Podge for this, but I find that Mod Podge, where I live anyways, always remains quite sticky even after it's dry. So matte medium I have a lot more success with. It's a little bit of a higher priced item, but I have more success with it in my, in my part of the world. So once I had my background, which has this kind of very textured because the tissue paper overlaps, I put a couple of different layers of tissue paper. And this tissue paper, by the way, is the same paper that came in the hip kit. So the hip kit always comes wrapped in a really pretty blue tissue paper. So it was really nice to get to use some of the packaging from the kit this month. Um, so 
I had this background that had the word love embossed. It looked like it was embossed on it, but it was actually sandwiched between the tissue paper and the background paper. And I wanted to put him right here so that the title would be Love Him. So I used those same gold letter stickers that came in the October kit. And then I just misted where I knew that the photo would be so that it would look like the mist is kind of coming out from behind the photo. And then I added some splatter. And then I just added some... Uh, washi tape to the top and the bottom and this is washi tape that came in the Project Life kit from the Hip Kit Club and then I just embellished it with various triangle pieces. I was really looking forward to using the triangles that came in this kit all month long and I couldn't find an opportunity to use them and so in this page I felt like I had more freedom because I didn't have anything that I felt would be competing with them or kind of getting in the way of having such angular uh, embellishments and so I wanted it to kind of look like the triangles were dropping they almost feel like a video game you know like the like the triangles are dropping and you have to kind of like get out of their way or you have to shoot them or it kind of like reminded me of that asteroids kind of retro video game he's not playing a game there he's actually uh, editing some photos but uh, but yeah, I just, you know, where it's a masculine, he's not a gamer at all, but I just thought that it had that kind of, it was reminiscent of that, and uh, I really liked that look, not for the theme, but just, I just thought it looked cool. So here's that page. So I told you more about that page just because I don't have that video on my channel, so I thought I would just spend a little bit more time describing it for you guys and showing it to you guys, because I really love this approach. And then this, and then this is just a layout that I did for scrapbooking cards today. That is does not use those words. It just happened to be in the bottom of my tray here. So these are how I use the six titles. Just to summarize, I covered it with tissue paper and made it look like it was embossed on the whole background paper for this kind of a look. And then I misted it with a red mist and then covered it after it dried I covered it with glossy accents for this shiny look it almost looks like a rubber piece or oh, it's it's shinier than a rubber piece it looks like maybe a piece of acrylic or epoxy or something it's very pretty and I love how it has this modeled effect and that's because it uh, the chipboard it absorbs the mist a little bit differently in different spots and so you get this kind of really modeled look if you wanted a really solid red you could either paint it or you could gesso it and then add your mist because that would keep it from absorbing the reason you get this modeled look is because it absorbs but I really like that look then I covered it with Nouveau drops to make it look like tooth enamel Then for this one, I painted it two different colors and then used washi tape to span the border between the, where the two colors end. And the next color begins. I think this might be my favorite technique. And then I just straight up painted it and left it with its own natural matte finish. And this is a watercolor pigment, so it has a nice kind of watercolory look where it's not 100% even all the way. Like, it, see how it's a little bit darker here, and then it's lighter up here. I really love that. And then I misted it for an ombre effect. So six different ideas on how to use these Dear Lizzie large chipboard printable, these paintable large chipboard words. Thanks so much for watching this summary video. It's basically the same thing as a recap because I basically only did these six layouts plus this other one that's on the Scrapbook and Cards Today channel. So thanks so much for watching this recap video. Take care and let me know what you're doing with these giant words. I'd love to hear any more ideas because I trust me, if they make any more of these, I'm totally going to be buying them. So let me know your ideas as well. Or if you tried any of these, let me know how you found it. Take care and have a really great scrappy week. 
If you're new to my channel and you like what I'm creating, please subscribe to my channel by clicking on my profile picture there. And also feel free to check out any of these other videos that are linked below or elsewhere on my channel. I hope you guys all have a really great scrappy week.